My next guest spent a little time behind bars this week, courtesy of the NYPD. Feminist author Naomi Wolf was arrested Wednesday for refusing to obey a lawful order, for refusing to leave a sidewalk outside a Huffington Post award ceremony honoring New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. She, of course, is also the co-founder of the American Freedom Campaign, author of the book Give Me Literary, uh, Liberty, and was a guest on the very first news hour I ever did, which was just a few years ago this month. And uh, Naomi Wolf joins me now. It's good to see you. It's good to be out and to see you. <laughs> it's good to be out. <laughs> did you ever anticipate saying that in this in this sort of we we've assumed this era is the uh, the the non-protest, non-argumentative, docile American public time. I think people would have voted if we had to vote on this two months ago. People would have said, "Yeah, that's a pretty good description." Would you have anticipated ever saying, "I just got out uh, after my arrest during a protest"? Um, well, I'm not surprised that there's this massive protest movement because that was bound to happen sooner or later, mm -hmm. and because it is so powerful. I mean, I studied, uh, as you know, in my book End of America, how democracies closed down and then people said well tell us how to open them up and so I um, studied how they open up and the number one effective tool is mass protest um, but it has to be a certain kind of protest it has to be peaceful mm -hmm. and enduring long-lasting and it has to disrupt business as usual so now that people have begun to show up they're starting to wake up and realize that they're acting like Americans this is what the founders intended us to do it's not optional the founders didn't say you have a right to protest. They said you have an obligation. Mm -hmm. When your representatives are not listening to you, you have an obligation. And they put the First Amendment first. It's the most important obligation. Everything else follows from that. Um, to peacefully assemble and petition government for redress of grievances. That doesn't surprise me. What does surprise me is that I actually didn't, um, I wish you could have read the quote marks around refusing to uh, obey a lawful order because I actually refused to obey an unlawful order. Right. I, I, right. I was in, it's quite amazing. I was jailed for standing on a corner outside an event to which I'd been invited with my boyfriend um, peacefully after having ascertained what the permit was that uh, governed the sidewalk mm -hmm. in order to obey the law, right? And so I was there obeying the law and I was arrested because the official in white who yelled at me to get off the sidewalk, I was frozen. I couldn't do it because I knew that to do it I would be going against the rule of the right. law. So basically giving the law up in exchange yeah. for, uh, for, for the order part of exactly. law and order rather exactly. than law Exactly, exactly. Did the Department of Homeland Security have anything to do with this? Well, I have no idea if they had anything to do with this phalanx of 30 or 40 um, police officers surrounding me and my partner mm -hmm. and uh, taking us in when we were peacefully not breaking any laws on the sidewalk. But um, I do know that something very disturbing happened after we were uh, put into a police van. Uh, we were supposed to be taken to the first precinct. Um, and that's the one that you know, sort of governs what happens on Hudson Street where we were arrested. Right. But they got a call that the protesters had gone to the first precinct with the lawyers of the National Lawyers Guild who were mm -hmm. going to help us and meet us and, you know, represent us and so they detoured the police detoured across town to the seventh precinct and misled the protesters about our whereabouts which is very disturbing because in america you know prisoners even for a little while are not supposed to be unaccountable disappear disappear mm -hmm. even more disturbing we learned that when the protesters arrived at erickson street where the first amendment what the first amendment what a slip <laughs> where the first precinct is um it was blocked off, and, and, and they said, what's going on? They didn't let any protesters or lawyers through, but they let people in business th suits through. And NYPD said, Homeland Security has frozen Erickson Street. So to me as an American, as a New Yorker, this is very big news mm -hmm. for reasons I don't have to explain to you. Yeah. A, a federal agency can, because two middle-aged, you know, couch potato intellectuals get arrested <laughs> for not obe not disobeying the law yeah. you know they can freeze a new york city street but, but even they, if they weren't freezing it and the and and the name was merely invoked that's its own problem exactly if the if a, if a city uh, police department is invoking this shadowy national entity exactly that becomes its own threat to the first amendment and freedom of the pre and of assembly and all the rest keith you're completely right and what baffles me is where's the new york times investigating this where are our local newspapers where's the national newspaper because because you, you let Homeland Security block off, or even say Homeland Security is blocked off one street, right. they could cordon off downtown Chicago tomorrow. And it's not like weapons of mass destruction or a natural disaster. It's, you know, two random people 
standing on a sidewalk being the excuse to uh, close down our civil society. So there's another really scary thing, if you want me to keep scaring you, but this is yeah. scary for all of us. It's not, it is not what happened to me and to my partner that is the worrying thing, the thing I'm distressed about. It's that people have got to understand that this could happen to absolutely anyone. For four or five years I've been saying, you start with Guantanamo, history shows, they start with the other, it gets closer and closer and closer and someday they come for you mm -hmm. when you are innocent and you have no recourse. When they were releasing us, the guy said, okay, I'm going to let you go this time with a summons, right? But if you go down and rejoin your friends, the protesters, and you get arrested, it'll be a real arrest next time. Here's a camera. He pointed to a camera. It'll take your photograph. Here's a fingerprint machine. We'll take your fingerprints. It'll go into that database, a federal database, and it'll follow you forever. And then I said, but officer, I got arrested tonight when I was obeying the law. How do I avoid getting arrested in the future? And he didn't dispute that I was obeying right. the law. He said, well, the officers decided it was a safety issue. And I said, but then what prevents any situation from being called a safety mm -hmm. issue and trumping the law and how people are obeying the law? And he didn't answer, but right. referred me to a section of the criminal code. But that, too, is very scary. Of course. We've given them the right to make up the law as they go along. You know, interesting. We haven't given them... Well, we've given it to them by sleeping on the job. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but there's something I really also want everybody to understand, which is why, like you did this amazing montage of here people mm -hmm. in this public park being told you can't put up tents. Here's the mayor saying, well, I want to strike a balance, as if it's up to them, right? This is what's happened. In the last 30 years, because the mass protest of the 70s, the moratorium, you know, the workers' rights, um, you know, the free speech movement was very effective, right? Big mass public mm -hmm. protests, the civil rights movement, all those protests are illegal now. Why? Because the powers that be realized this is a powerful tool. So there's been this stealth, secret um, tactic for 30 years in municipality after municipality to pass secretive permit uh, requirements mm -hmm. so that in Washington Square, you can't rally now. And, you, you know, p citizens can't use a megaphone, and, but police can use a megaphone, right. and on and on. And so technically we have the First Amendment, but when you try to actually use the First Amendment, you find that there are all these um, secretive permits. And the permit that I was told... Um, meant that my boyfriend and I couldn't walk on the street. I looked it up, because I'm a reporter. It's a permit that obliges the event holders to allow people to walk on the street. So they just made it up yep. and arrested us. And, and, and that's what we need to um, refuse to tolerate. It's not up to them. The First Amendment is for public space to be public and citizens to have the right to free assembly. And again, it's not... Um, does the mayor let us? Mm -hmm. We have to take back that right. We have to, you know, right. absolutely wipe out these uh, stealthy and, and really evil over permitizations of our free speech. And, and that's why they're there. Uh, Naomi Wolf, great thanks. Great Thank to see you. you. Thanks for coming in. The president says we're leaving Iraq. The right accuses him of failing there. Neither is true. Why no one will acknowledge that earlier this week the Iraqis told us, get out. That's next. This is Countdown.